But as I, as, I, as I took this book and I started reading, a lot hit me. And I decided to put a few slides together, uh, which I'm going to ask you to allow me to share uh, host uh, very quickly to just give uh, viewers a working idea of the environment that Punky worked in. And as I looked at the chapters, they told a theoretical and, and, and philosophical story and a framework that many may have missed. Papa, who made me, we're gonna I'm gonna show you some data on fathering very quickly. That address where you live, woman power, uh, that held me for quite a while. Mama cry, and I, as I look back at all the different mothers, 136 mothers I have worked with that I've documented, uh, and we're gonna be, be sharing with the public one day. A boy called Bogle, I'm coming back to that. Keisha and the circle of life, images of righteousness. You know, his name is Sheldon, shine and shun. And I want to share, allow me to share a little bit as I share with you just some, some ideas of the context of, of, of what Punky work, worked in at Escarna. So uh, I've dedicated my little PowerPoint saying, Signs and Wonders, Punky's Journey from Escarna to the World. I borrow that from, from, from whoever coined it. Uh, so this is Jamaica, the fourth most violent country in the world. Uh, since the year 2000, uh, located in the LAC, which accounts for 9.4% of the world in population, but 39.85% of murders. In other words, we are the most violent place in the world. Jamaica is located in this area. And uh, if you look, these are homicide rates. Uh, the, the group of people that Punky has spent a lot of time with, they have a homicide rate on average of 113 per 100,000 those between the age of 15 and 34, which the WHO describe as youth and extended youth. And if you look carefully, you will see they account for 50% of, of victims of homicide and 48%, that specific group, sorry, and 58% of perpetrators. If you look carefully, Kingston and St. James are the two most violent areas uh, in the country. And of course, Punky worked in Kingston for decades. And that, that purple line is drawn because it is 205 per 100,000, which is the US-led invasion of Iraq, body count per 100,000. And if you notice, you will see that there are areas where the homicide rate exceeds 414, which is twice the death toll of Iraq. And in the case here, uh, this is for all males, and this is for males of the combatant age, 15 to 34. And, and this is one of the areas, these are the people that Punky would have spent so much of her life in. Then Jamaica has two uh, gang hubs. The big one, of course, starts in Kingston right here, spreads to St. Andrew, to St. Catherine, to Clarendon. And then of those of you who are aware, uh, there was two formal attempts to bring in Manchester into the, the fray. And of course, you know Montego Bay, all right, which is here, uh, with Westmoreland II, followed by Hanover, then Trelawney, and of course they've begun to take bits of St. Elizabeth. Now, if you look at that, that's the environment. Unlike, the, these are the three areas I spend the most of my life working in violence. And you will notice that Belize under COVID, with the trigger of COVID, has had a 38% reduction in murders. Trinidad, 26%, but Jamaica, boop, absolutely nothing, 2%. And so the problems are really, really, really severe here. So I've broken, uh, I've broken uh, young people that you meet in an inner city into five groups. And these five groups are based on something called ontological security, which is the idea that, if, that there are four things young people need in order for them to feel stable. And at SOAS London, we we covered 117 countries in which we learned from young people what are the basic things you needed. And we're going to come back to that very quickly. So breaking them down into shutters, those are, do those are people, are young people who've killed more than once. All right. Then we have high violence, uh, or high risk, killing once. Medium, uh, stab or shoot, but not kill. Uh, low violence, 
uh, absorb a lot of indirect and, and direct violence, but not uh, uh, ex, uh, are transferred to others. And shielded would be like the young people like myself, uh, and of course, a boy called Bogle that we're gonna talk about a little bit. And then what have we discovered? When you take the four blocks, let's take those four blocks, food, every young person across the 117 countries we worked with at SOAS said they needed food, followed by parents. And of course, we come back to Papa who made me uh, and Mama cry. Uh, followed by, of course, uh, an environment of care, okay, which a lot of kids don't have. Uh, and of course, followed by opportunity structures, which we call in Jamaica, education and training. Now, when we look at all of those, right, we start with chronic hunger. We found that the kids who were killing repeatedly, 52% of them would have suffered from chronic hunger compared to 43% of those that were high violence compared to 25%, 21%. And look at the shielded, people like me who grew up in Savin Lamar, right, grew up in violence, but shielded. And then let's look at those who are carrying their families alone. Same, almost the same thing. These are kids, right? Boys are girls. Oh, by the way, we do have a few female shutters. This is not as gender specific as you think. And, and look at what we found, the very same picture. The more pressure is put on them, the more violent they become. The more they they're were not given a chance to feel a sense of future or ontological security, the more violent they would be. So if you look at parenting very quickly, you'll see the national figures for Jamaica. 42% of our homes have a biological father, 82% of our homes have a mother. Look at the inner city where Punky worked for all these decades. The 42% national figures for inner city just dropped, boom, to 50%, 21%. Look at mothers, as powerful as you, and, and as present as mothers were, drops down to 43% with grandmas and other people filling in. Look at inner city killers. They drop further for both male and female as, as they kill. And then look at the ratings. You see the boys are overwhelmingly connected to their mothers. 70% of them says I can call on my mother compared to 36% of them with their fathers. And then the ones who kill can't call on anybody, right? Uh, let's go on to, to the comparison between a child who was high risk and, and one that was shielded like Herbs who grew up in Gone Court Lawn, in Savlamar, with everybody looking out for me, yeah? Mm. Right. So let's look at crime family. They're members of a crime family. They're 17.3 times more likely to come from a crime family, which means generations of suffering, victimization, and perpetration. Right there, and you, you heard Pookie talk about the torture within homes and IPV. They're five point four times more likely to become a killer if they if they're from a family where torture is normal, and three point six times if they're desperate and hungry, and three point one times if they see their mothers and fathers fighting, right, and two point seven times more likely if they dropped out of school, and two point five times more likely to be involved at the uh, or to be high risk if you drop the economic burden on them from before the age of 16. Now, what we found out was that, hey, if you take a baseline, and, 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 and you see, when you talk about, about a boy called Bogle, and you talk about the different parts of this book, right, uh, you're going to understand what, what all of this is saying. Yeah, if we take boys who drop out at grade nine, or even the, 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 the 64 uh, women in my data set who've killed people, who, who half of them been contract killers, you'd be shocked to know, right? You're gonna find this very same thing. If you take grade nine as the baseline, what have we found? If, if families love their children so much that they ensure that they finish school and do three CXCs, they will be four times less likely to be high risk. If they ever, if, if the community and the government and the people and everybody love them so much and they have parents and neighbors and punkies, to be able to complete Cape, they'll be 10 times safer. And oh my God, OMG to the square. If they ever go to college or university, they'll be 85 times safer than if they're dropped out of school. This is what, these are the things that motivated Punky to stay in the trenches. And this is why today I want to use this moment to honor her. 
Look at the ontological security. Kids who express that they are not socially suicided. Notice the term. When we ask them, can you tell us what happens in the next five years? 77% of the kids who were shielded had a working idea of tomorrow. 69% of those that were low had a working idea of tomorrow and a sense of ontological security, a sense of future. 53%, 28%, and only less than a quarter of shutters had any idea about tomorrow morning. They considered themselves, the other 76% mm -hmm. considered themselves walking dead. Let me stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Let me get to the core of why Punky is so important to me and why I have already put in my course for this semester in the master's program of urban anthropology for two of the students to critique, to evaluate your book as their final assignment, Punky. <laughs> Let me tell you why. 2018, I met a youngish man. He's in his 40s now. And he happens to be number 71 in my data set of 214 young people who've killed repeatedly. We call them shutters. 98 are still alive. And number 71 said to me, a pretty Rasta woman. And I began to think, pretty Rasta woman. So it's beginning to churn in my head. I met her in a place called Escana. In fact, no, no Rasta. We meet her in a place called London. No, not London. <laughs> Bunky knows there's another different London, which is just around the corner from Escana. And one day she see me and she said, yo, yo, dog, why... Why you walk with your gun and bulge up, bulge up on your side, so It's almost like you use it to look vagina. And he said, Lord, no, baby. No, me not do that. I'm just my shirt pull up, man. And he said, boy, Dr. Herbs, you know what hit me? She never tell me something if I get rid of my gun or whatever. And the first thing she said is conceal the gun because we you know why they come to an example for you look up at them. And Herbs, I last time, that, 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 the morning that I did kill somebody that I last personally killed. That young man killed seven people during his lifetime. Today, he's a farmer, thanks to Punky. This is what happens in the trench. And Punky, we have to tell you, not when you, you get old, I will come to graveside, those of us who are privileged, and start to say all kinds of stuff we have to tell you from now. Folk, I want you, to everybody, pass on the message to everybody to get a copy of this book. My students will be getting some. They'll be doing it as a formal project. This is the core of urban anthropology, the core of urban ethnography, the core of Black people. Let me say it without any reserve. Remembering that they're Black and the transitions we've made from being ruled to self-rule. Mm -hmm. Ja bless you. Take care of yourself, Punky. And we declare this book launched.